This course, Piping Engineering Leadership, is intended for the employee who is now or is about to become the lead over all piping activities on a process plant project. We recognize that not all companies use the terminology PEL, Piping Engineering Lead. Some companies may use the term Project Piping Engineer, or PPE, or Lead Piping Engineer, LPE, or other term meaning the person in charge of all piping. This position on a project should be filled with the most knowledgeable, best trained, and most experienced senior person available in the piping department. Over the past decades, many of these people who would have filled this position have left the workforce due to retirement or disillusionment from insufficient career advancement. There has also been a lack of thought and action by companies at large when it comes to employee development and training at all levels, including the senior level. This course is intended to correct this problem of the missing training for senior level piping engineering leadership for process plant projects. <clears throat> Purpose. This course is intended to define the position through the meaning of the title and the detailed study of the roles and responsibilities. This means you must know who you are and who everyone else is on your team and on the other teams around you. To be successful in any position, a person must understand the requirements of the position. This means you must understand both the things that must be done and the things that must not be done. This course is intended to ensure that the PEL has a full knowledge and understanding of all the issues found on a typical project, whether complex or simple. It further offers tools to help the student to deal with or solve the problems presented by these issues. And these tools include how to bring order to the chaos that prevails on any project. These tools will help the PEL be successful. Format. The format for this course is web-based and is delivered via Skype. This allows the student to take the course and gain the benefits of the material without the cost of traveling, being away from home, or missing work. The course will be seven weeks starting on a Friday with a Skype meeting between the students and the instructors for a discussion of the required material for the week. The students then have Saturday till Thursday to complete the assignments. Thursday there will be another Skype meeting between the student and the instructor for a follow-up. This meeting will be a discussion of the past week's work with time for questions and answers. Each week a 10 question multiple choices quiz will also be transmitted to the students for the purpose of student evaluation. The course is based on the textbook Piping Engineering Leadership for Process Plant Projects. The author of this book is one of the instructors. Each student will receive a copy of the book prior to the start of the first class. The book is included in the price of the course. Each student will be evaluated on their work, participation, and understanding of the subject matter, and a certificate of completion will be awarded based on performance. Week 1, Roles and Responsibilities. The focus of the first week studies will be defining the, and understanding the environment that surrounds the PEL. This means who the players are and what the role and responsibilities of these positions include. To do this, we will discuss three of the groups involved in with the execution of the home office piping of a project. The first group is piping. The piping material engineering function, the plant layout and piping design function, 
the piping material control function, and the pipe stress engineering function, as well as the piping leadership and supervision. The next group consists of the other peer level engineering groups that piping must interface with on the average project. Here we have process, civil, structural, mechanical equipment, vessels and tanks, electrical and instrumentation. The third group includes the non-engineering groups involved in any project as well as project management. The roles and responsibilities of each of these groups are important to know and understand. These groups are all involved in the piping effort as in the same way and the piping engineering lead must know what these groups owe piping and what piping owes these other groups in order to complete the project. Week 2. All projects are different. It is important to know and understand the project. This is the time to look at the variations in how projects are executed and what differences are required in the execution. Project execution includes engineering only, <clears throat> engineering procurement construction or EPC, and engineering procurement construction management or EPCM. These are just the major variations in the way projects are executed. However, the PEL needs to know and understand these variations and what they require. We will look at the different types of projects and why differences are required due to the type of project. The types of projects may include grassroots, revamp, or disaster rebuild. Here again, there are differences in the requirements and execution methods that the PEL needs to know. Week 3, External Interfaces. External interfaces include a number of manufacturers, vendors, suppliers, fabricators, and subcontractors who will be involved in a project. Who they are, what information do they need from you, piping, and what do you, piping, require from them. There will be requests for quotes, for material, purchase orders, expediting of material, and other tasks required such as qualifying, selecting, and monitoring of pipe fabrication jobs. Construction work packages to prepare and for defining the subcontracts. As the PEL on a project, you need to know and understand these relationships because these issues have an impact on how the PEL runs the job and the success or failure of that effort. Week 4, Project Definition. Defining a project in a written scope of work is one of the first and most important documents the PEL will create on a project. It will describe what the project consists of, what will be done, and what deliverables are required. This document forms a foundation for everything that the piping department will do and will not do on the job. This document must receive the written approval of both project management and the client. The next step is the piping group's home office labor hour or man hour estimate. The man hour estimate is feared by many because they do not know how to make it easy. This course will introduce the student to tools and methods that are intended to make the man hour estimating process easy. Developing an estimate is required to help the PEL and the group supervisors manage the activities and tasks that are defined in the scope of work. Week 5. When does it need to be done? The next step for the PEL and his group supervisors is to develop the schedule for all the piping groups. Here again, it is a task that is feared by many because they do not know how to make it easy. This course will introduce tools which, is, which are intended to make 
the development of a detailed control level schedule easier. Developing a schedule is important to help the PEL and the group supervisors to manage work that is defined in the scope of work. Schedule will be influenced by project milestones <coughs> from the group's interfaces and cover all piping engineering, design, analysis, supervision, and deliverable production. Week 6, Managing Work. The secret to managing work is based on five simple rules. We will identify and discuss these rules in detail showing how they impact the PEL and the overall piping effort on a project. Planning is required for all phases of a project. It needs to be done early and it needs to be reviewed often. Organization is another important issue for the PEL. Some things that need to be organized include the data files, the vendor files, purchasing files, and travel and field trips. <clears throat> Staffing is important because the PEL must know how many people the project needs, the type of people, <clears throat> material engineers, stress engineers, designers, whatever, what experience level and when the project needs them and for how long. Directing is the proper assignment of work and the proper monitoring of that work and how to recognize when and how to take corrective action if someone is not performing as required. The PEL must be able to remember everything in approved scope of work and be able to catch anything and everything that is different. The PEL must be aware of the approval, approved estimate and be able to spot when too many hours are being used versus what was estimated. The PEL must also be aware of the schedule and take action to get back on schedule. <clears throat> Week 7 Reporting. Reporting is another important responsibility for the PEL. There are many different types of reports. Some reports are required by the project only, and some are required by the piping department manager. Some may be required by both. The most important issue to report is status. Reports are required to define where should your group be now and where they are actually. Some projects may require productivity to be included in the status report. Summary. The purpose of this class is to raise the level of confidence in those who are currently in a leadership role and those who are about to become a leader. In doing this, it is not the intention to dictate the only way to do something, but to expose the student to the issues that are important and present and all on all and are present on all projects as well as offering ways to handle these issues. Inniped and the instructors involved here are committed to helping each student make a difference in their own future as well as in their future projects. <clears throat>